Hello my soccer universe. Yesterday evening we did something completely different. For once I saw my first women's game and of course I went with my women there as well. It was played here in Linz. It was not a small one. It was the small matter of Austria against Germany in women's Euro qualifying. And it was something that I was really up for the moment it was announced about a month ago that Linz will be hosting this game in the hope that they also break the record for the highest attendance ever for a women's game in Austria. Spoiler alert, it's only the second highest and it was not even that close, which is for me one of the two disappointments of the evening, because I was really hoping that this record can be broken. The previous record was just a um, past year when Austria hosted France in the Nations League. It was played in Vienna and yes, Vienna is a much bigger city than Linz. So from that point, point of view, maybe it's not such a surprise, it's around 11,000, yesterday it was 7,500. And if I look at the stadium, it was not down to the, you know, they only opened the upper sections um, in the um, corners next to the fan curve. Then everything on the bottom was actually well filled, except for the away section, more on that in a little bit. Uh, but it was the fan sector that was eerily empty for last games this is usually almost completely full even when it's not a good game so that was a little bit of, of a negative surprise we also decided for this game to go to a slightly different seat i wanted to for once sit a little bit higher up to see to get a better view and honestly the seats where we are for last games is perfect because you're so close to, to, to the action, but sometimes you want to see it a little bit differently as, as well. And I sometimes I actually like sitting high in stadiums. In addition, it saved us 15 euro seats. This is in there. We had really nice seats. And as I said, uh, everything on the sides was pretty full. What was also not notable, two things, two more things were quite notable that um, there were many young girls there. Not entirely unexpected, but it was noticeable. It was no, 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 also at the bathrooms for, for the women. But it was a huge line, which usually is not the case. So completely different uh, demographic going to a women's game in a sense. But, you know, um, we have to go also to women's games, to be honest. And at least when it's the Austrian national team, which is now a known quantity in Austria, I was really up, up for, for the game. The other thing that I found noticeable is that the entire away section, you know, this is almost like a cage in the corner next to the family sex sector, was not used. They actually made for the German fans next to the uh, away section this block. This was all for the German fans. There was even three German fans in the Austrian fan stand right on the corner with a big flag hanging there, which also is, was actually nice. I mean, Austria Germany is not an ugly, it's a rivalry. But it's not an ugly rivalry, and you know, since we're with women's it's probably more like little sister against big sister, uh, then there's some violence or whatever, because you know, we're divided by the same language, if you would like. So, um, that was interesting that the record did not get wrong, it was seven and a half thousand. I mean, it's good, uh, but I was actually hoping that the record will be broken, that uh, a national team has a little bit more pull, and there's a whole lot of discussion about. In all sorts of sure national team play in a club stadium, which is a complete BS and beside the point. I also have to say that my girls, especially the little one, were so up for this game. Uh, you know, this is the first, only the second ever Austria game, the first ever women's, women's game. As, as, as for me, we saw Austria France uh, like two years ago in Vienna and now also, also Germany, I know I bought the damn little Austria jerseys back then and uh, the little one pulled it on. The moment she came home from, from school, then she pulled her flag and she was running around and singing songs for Austria and was so excited about it. And it didn't stop even af after the game. She said, yeah, 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 it was Austria, Austria going forward. And we won the first half, even though we lost in the end. And more on that in just a little bit. But it was so hard, hard to how excited and, you know, full of this positive tension there. I mean, the bigger one, you know, she's going a different phase. She's a little bit calm, calm a bit, but, but she was also there, definitely looking forward to that. And, you know, it was the three of us that actually convinced my wife to also come with us because I said, I want to go. The two of us said, of course we're going. And then my wife said, yeah, I have to go with you guys too, because otherwise I will miss out on something and she doesn't want to do this. So we went as a family and it was fun. Uh, it was a great family evening, although the game kicked off 
relatively late. I mean, we came home around 11, way past their bedtime. Yes, they slept before. And they were then even hungry. <laughs> so <laughs> it took almost midnight until they were asleep. So interesting stuff, but that's more on a personal note. Uh, before we go into the game, one more thing. This was the official debut for the new Austrian national team jersey by Puma. And I have already said, said it before, I think the Austrian national team jersey is among the Puma ones, probably among the better ones. Not perfect, but it looks all right. I don't know why Austria had to play in black pants and Germany went for an all white look. Uh, you know my thoughts on the Germany home jersey. I think largely it's okay. There's again a little small patch here that I don't think is necessary. What annoyed me a little bit more with the Austrian look, not only the black pants, I mean, I can live with that, but um, I said it in my Puma video, there is this band going on the back and this also goes on the pants, on the black pants with this white band on the red shirt looks mismatched. Just saying that, but hey, we saw it there, it was sold there officially in the fans, so I did not get it because I know then in about one to two years times, I will get this shirt for about half the price. And yeah, I want to get all the shirts that Austria has ever wanted uh, at, at a Euro. And so definitely will uh, look for that, that one, but down the road for sure. Also two interesting things for the name set. I think Puma, their uh, new numbering style, <laughs> it's about as ordinary as the shirts are, but it's actually this way, it's a really good thing. These are very non-busy, clearly legible numbers in a really nice font. I gotta give props to, to Puma for not going, going crazy as, like, as they used to do. Uh, and then there was also something for Germany. You may have heard about the number four controversy where if you put the four, it looks like the S from the Nazi times. And if you have four, four, that looks like SS and they completely banned that one. They adjusted this already and at least now a closed four because uh, a player came on in the sec second half with that one. And yeah, uh, I think it makes more sense. Um, I think a German uh, numbering style maybe has some oddities, but the 3D effect on it is quite nice. But that, this was now kid news only. Now let's go into the, the match. Austria pressed the SHIT out of Germany from the get go. Germany couldn't get a foot on the field and it was exemplified by the first goal scored by Lean Campbell, not Irish uh, heritage there, uh, who pressed first Dorsun after she actually had, had before, but she stayed in the game, she pressed high, she gained the ball, ran it into the box, uh, then uh, against Hendrik, same, same thing, Hand, Hendrik wants to take the ball away from her, it's again, press ball, goes to her puts it in the internet. It was a uh, great individual pressing effort after nine minutes. Just seven minutes later, there's a free kick, very centrally lobbed into the box and everyone is focusing on uh, Schichtel, who is a 190 meter woman, so really, really, really tall. And again, Campbell is very open and headed into the uh, internet, 2-0, and it was fully deserved at that point. Germany did not exist. Germany could not deal with, with, with the press, especially, uh, and you know, uh, even their uh, highly talented Lena Obodov, she was a non-factor in that game up until there, at that point. A 3-0 was in the cards, and of course my little one, 3-0, I wanna see 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0. I, I honestly said, given that Germany are huge favorites, I mean the um, odds for Germany winning this game were 1.28 which is about 75% chance that Germany will Germany win. I thought, if you get 2-0 in the half, you at least get a point for qualifying out of it, which is a point more than, than, than you would expect. And maybe you can think about a win. Because the one thing that Germany have, they have a long bench that Austria do not. And um, unfortunately, fitness is an issue also. If you don't have such a deep squad after 60 minutes of high pressing style, then usually the more uh, the fitter team that won that can replace evenly will win it. And so I was thinking 2-0 would be great, but it was not to be. It was a throw-in where Georgieva, Bulgarian descent, <laughs> we have a very interesting Austro-National team. But we, uh, she gets the ball, she wants to, uh, you know, wants to play herself out of it, but is for once praised by the Germans and no one is helping her. And then the ball falls to uh, Clara Bull, and from distance she makes it 2-1 and I think, oh no. Yes, there were two chances for Austria to 
go at least with a 3-1 into, into the half, and I think this would have been good. I'm at halftime, Horst Rubisch, the coach, yes, Horst Rubisch, that Horst Rubisch, From. made some adjustments, and Clara Bühl almost immediately after halftime makes it 2-2, and I think, oh no, this is going the completely the wrong way. And then Germany were actually for a few minutes better, and they earn a penalty that I don't think was really a penalty. I mean, goalie come, 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 comes out and German attacker, I think it was uh, Schuller again, it was Schuller who then uh, was falling more or less over her. Yes, it is not completely an invented one, but it was a harsh one. No VR as well. She didn't help, although I, think, I don't think VR would have overturned that one. And uh, Julia Quinn. Uh, makes it 3-2 for Germany in the 62nd minute. And then Germany played it home relatively safely. Yes, Austria were, were trying, but as I said, uh, there were only a few chances. I think there was a free kick, there was one wide shot, but uh, that took it. And after the game, you could see that while the whole stadium was rising to applaud Aust Austria for a really good performance, especially the first 30 minutes, I mean, you cannot play better than that. But they all felt dejected and I hope they can put themselves out of it because now they have to play away in Poland, which is a team that they should beat. Poland just got beaten by Iceland relatively comfortably. So it's a game that you have, have to win to stay in the qualification group. And the whole qualification mode and so on is something else to discuss for another time. In any case, uh, it was a little bit of a gutting 3-2 loss. I still think it was a brilliant game. It was a really, really nice game to watch. Uh, I actually have to say, uh, yes, maybe it's not uh, the women's game was not as physical to watch live, but there was quite some good action in there as well. I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. And now, since the next home game against Iceland is not played too far from here in Ried, uh, a little one already wants to go. So, let's see. Maybe there will be another women's game from the Austrian national team for us in there. In any case. Let me know if you've seen a women's game. I just thought I wanted to report all that because it was a really fun evening. Family had fun and that's the most important. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Talk to you soon about other things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!